what I'd like to do is I'd like to just jump right in and show you what this is all about, rather than spending a bunch of time with preliminaries and whatnot. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of what we mean when we're talking about this whole concept of network map to wire map. This is something that's pretty exciting, and it's something that, at least in my business, I've never seen before. Now, of course, since we've got a demo going on, uh, I let my application go to sleep, so hopefully it will wake up here momentarily and we'll be able to get started with this demonstration. What I'm showing you here is the console of the, uh, the Planet Software application running on my website, and, or running on their website. And I think I should, should I either wait for it, or should I just go ahead and just open a new one? Maybe I'll do that. Now, one thing I'll point out about this uh, demonstration that I'm about to give you here is that I had never touched this until about a week ago. So you're looking at somebody who's a total novice using this software, and I think that'll give you a pretty good idea of what it's like to, uh, to be able to use it. In a few minutes, we're going to be having someone from Planet giving us a demonstration of this software in, a, in all its glory. And of course, uh, he's quite a bit more of an expert than I am. But uh, hopefully you're going to see somebody who's not an expert be able to do some things that are pretty cool as well. Okay, now it's a big database that's loading. It takes it a few seconds to get started. So you'll just have to bear with me here while it, uh, while it populates everything on the screen here because this is managing all of the information about your IT infrastructure that's out there. And so that's that's a lot of different things between all the different cables, the racks, the servers, the switches, all the, uh, the conduits and whatnot that carry the data. So I, I think we're getting there. Uh, we got our diagram here popping up. Okay, here we go. So what I'm looking at here, here we go. All right. So now I've just loaded in. So this is a, a very, very high level view of, of a network I've got going here. It looks like it's a, uh, it looks like it's a college campus. And uh, I can see that some of the, uh, well, some of the local area network or maybe more of the campus area network things that are going on here. But I can see a really good view of my network. What I want to do is let's say I'm looking for a certain specific cable in my network that I, I suspect I have a problem with or something like that. So what I'm doing is I'm going up here to this search window, and I'm going to search for, it's not a very exciting name, Copper002. Yeah, you know how demos are. And I'm going to just put that in there and say, hey, can you help me track down and figure out where that table is? Okay, that's cool. Here it is. It's in my list. So on my database here, I've got this list of all my cables. And I'm going to say, you know what? Can you show me where that is? Oops, wrong click here. Can you help me locate that? So I just go to Locate. I click on Locate. And it's going to pull me into a map of the specific building and location where that cable is. And what I can do also, I believe, I think I saw a little trick here that I can do, which is to actually um, I do locate. I think I could even blink it so I can tr try and track it down. And you can see that it, it's this one right here. In fact, I see there's a little bit of blinking going on there. And if I wanted to know where this was, I could just kind of move around the diagram. Oh, this is in building one, floor one. Okay, got it. So there's the cable that I'm worried about. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that cable. What I'm going to do is just double click on that cable. And it's going to pull up all the information about that cable that's been pulled up. You can see, you know, what are the plugs and connections? What type of cable is it? Are there any service loops? And so on. Specifically, I can look at the test results. Now these test results came in from Linkware Live and they were done with a Versive tester. And I can see the basics of that cable there. So now I can get a little bit of information about the length and whatnot. There's a test there, Fluke Versive, we appreciate that. Thanks guys at Planet. Um, I'm gonna go to attachments here. And down here, one of the attachments are the Fluke Linkware test results. If I click on that, I'm now going to jump out of the Planet software and into Linkware Live. Those of you who know what Linkware Live is, it's our database management for cable testing results. And if I scroll down here, I'll be able to see Copper002. That's the results that are over here right now. So I could pull up any of the specifications for that specific cable that I've now drilled down to, including the wire map. And there's the wire map. I could also look at other things like the insertion loss or whatever other details I want. 
But what we're showing you here, and I think this is the really exciting thing, is that we can go from a network map, which you saw here, all the way down to a wire map with just a very few clicks. And that's the cool part about the integration of this product. And that's what we're going to show you about a little bit more here. So before we get too much further, what I'd like to do is, now that we've finished that demonstration, first off, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Mark Mullins. I'm the manager of product marketing at Sleep Networks. I've got Jason Godley on the phone, who is a, an expert on the planet IRM software. And thank you, Jason, for that training. You, you got it so that I could do this without, uh, without any problems, even when I ran into a couple of of uh, issues, so that was great. Can you say hi, Jason? Just make sure you're there. Hey, hi, everyone. Okay, thanks. Now, before we go too far, though, there's one other thing I'd like to do, and that is I would like to, we'd like to do a little poll of our audience here. And what I'd like to do with this poll is to see how do you manage your network? So I'm going to open this poll up. And we're going to ask you a few questions about this, specifically, how do you manage your IT assets and infrastructure? Now, you may be a contractor that doesn't manage this stuff. We still think this is interesting because your customers might be using it. But let's say you actually manage your own network. You use a purchased integrated solution like Planet Software. Maybe you've got a homegrown solution, something you designed and built yourself. Uh, if we've got Google on the phone, they probably have their own stuff. They kind of do everything themselves. Uh, maybe you got a mix of stuff. You store some stuff in CAD. You got other stuff in Excel. You got a bunch of Visio diagrams. Maybe you document some stuff. Maybe you don't document a lot of stuff. Or maybe you don't really have an approach at all. And so that would be uh, great to let us know um, how you feel about that or, or what you've been doing to manage that uh, infrastructure. While you're answering those questions, I'll just cover the agenda. The agenda is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to give you a quick overview of Linkware Live, just a couple of minutes, because I'm guessing a lot of the people on the call here understand Linkware Live and, and probably have been even using it. Then um, Jason's going to do the much more interesting stuff, which is the Planet IRM demonstration. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's really something to see. And he, he's put together a very cool demonstration. And we'll finish off with some Q&A. So let's go back to the survey results. I don't know if... Uh, I'm going to close the poll. Uh, a lot of you haven't started it yet. Here's your last chance to go ahead and do it. Um, take that poll. Give us your answers. Uh, or maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Jason, people are a little nervous about telling uh, the world that they don't actually have a solution. Because what we're looking at right now, and I'll let, you, I'll let people keep doing this poll, the number one answer is the mix of stuff. Uh, they use some CAD. They use some Excel files, Visio, some other things. Um, a lot of people on the call aren't responsible for managing this. Um, there's one brave soul out there who admits that they don't have an approach. And, uh, and then there's a number of people that do use a purchased integrated solution, 6% of the people out there. But by far the biggest answer is, is you know, I document some stuff. I don't document other things, this one right here. And the number one solution is a mix of stuff. So, so you know, you got some CAD stuff, you got some Excel files. It's not all tied together in one place. That's by far the most popular answer, which I suspect, Jason, is what you see out there in the world as well. So before we turn it over to Jason, for those of you who don't know what Linkware Live is, Linkware Live is a cloud-based management for all of your test results and your tester setups and even your testers as well. So if we start up here in the upper right corner, a project manager can sit down at their laptop or tablet define all of the test results, or I'm sorry, all of the tests, the cables, the IDs, and load that up to Linkware Live. Then um, the technician can download those setups and set up their tester. So they don't even have to set up their tester, and that really can eliminate a lot of errors. All the cable IDs, all the types of tests that need to be done are loaded into the tester. Then the tester is used to go out and do all the testing. And then the technician over Wi-Fi can upload all those results back to Linkware Live, where the reports administrator can pull them off and generate reports. The project manager can track the job, the project status, the status of the job at any time. And you can also even track the testers themselves, where they were used, what software version they have, and the calibration status. Now, one thing that we don't have on this diagram, because it's very new, and that Jason will demonstrate to us, 
is if you build your cabling plant and define it in the planet software, you can actually upload that to Linkware Live, have that go out to the technician and download it directly to the testers. So eliminating this step of having to do it manually by letting the planet software uh, define the cable types, the lengths, and all that sort of thing so that they go into the tester. Then the results go back to Linkware Live and then right back to Planet. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Linkware Live has been a really big success for us. We are approaching 50 million test results uploaded uh, since we launched it in 2015. And as you can see, and this is probably a diagram of what exponential growth looks like, Although I will point out, you can see in here where the pandemic hit, there's a little bit of a glitch. It slowed down for a while, but it seems to be picking back up again. So a lot of people are using Linkware Live to manage their test results. And, um, and we think that's great because it does eliminate errors. It makes things easier to use. It also gets rid of the, one of the biggest problems we get on our support line, which is customers calling in and saying they lost, the tester was stolen or uh, was damaged and I lost my test results. If you upload them to Linkware Live, they're there forever, backed up and nice and safe. So what we're announcing today, as I mentioned, is the ability of the Planet software to go in and load test settings and IDs into the Linkware Live platform and pull the test results back out so that you can look at them like I demonstrated to you uh, just a minute or two ago. All right, enough with the preliminaries. I'm going to hand it over here to Jason so that he can show you what this thing really looks like and how it works. So, Jason, I'm going to make you the presenter. And that's okay. so all that cool stuff that you showed me a few days ago. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, okay, just let me I'll just share my desktop here. Just bear with me. And right now you should see the application. Okay, so I'm going to take you through really four different scenarios. One, how we use the system for fault finding, how we can use it to analyze our infrastructure for capacity. We're going to look at impact analysis. So when we have an incident, what is impacted by that incident? And then finally, we're going to look at how we use Planet in the design mode and how we can pass information to and from the Linkware Live system. So Planet basically combines all information into a single point of reference one place to, for your drawings for your cut sheets for your network connectivity and for capacity planning and the first thing we're going to do is look at how we use it for fault finding um could be that we have a faulty fiber we've run our otdr test result using our versive device and it's come back and it's told us the length of the fiber based upon that test. So let's now go and find that fiber RM in the same way that you saw Mark earlier on. So I, I come in here, I enter the name of the fiber that I want to find, and the fiber name is called ABC. And here we can see the results of that cable, and we can see the last test result that we received from Linkware Live system, and we can see that's far longer than the result shown on the Versive device. Okay, so we have a problem here. We we now want to find where the fault could possibly be in the infrastructure. So if I select the cable, it shows me which cable is affected. So we can see that cable is routed between building three and building one. We see that highlighted on the screen. And because IRM manages all of the connectivity and how that cable is routed, we can bring up the routing details for that individual cable. And now see the full routing detail shown for the cable. And just to explain this slightly, it tells me the building where the service or the cable starts. We can see it goes through some slab ducting into an entrance facility. It then picks up some pathways. It comes into our Georgetown site or area that we're looking at here. It's routed to M uh, a maintenance hall, MH102. That's around about the 285 foot. So that's approximately in the location where the OTDR test result was showing, about 86 meters. 
And we can also see if we continue the route, we can see it continues on some other pathways. It comes into building three entrance facility. And we can also see in building three, we have a small service loop. Um, so if we did need to perhaps pull the cable, uh, then we do have a little bit of slack in that cable where we can we 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 can we we can use. Um, so we need to go to the potential fault location, which looks like it's at this maintenance hall. And because Planet provides a very interactive way of interacting with the data, I can click on the maintenance hall, and I have a number of options. Uh, if I want to locate it, so I need to know physically where it resides, then it will open up the drawing uh, or view for that maintenance hall, so we can see exactly where that maintenance hall is located. And I now know where to send the engineers or technicians to that facility. It may be that I want to provide additional information. So what are they going to find when they get there? Well, again, we provide managed view for all of our objects. And for maintenance holes specifically, we have what we call our butterfly diagrams. So here I can see how the maintenance hall is arranged in terms of the duct banks entering on each wall, how many ducts there are, and also how many cables we have routed through those ducts. It's a very simple diagram, but obviously, you know, we have we can have very, very complex uh, maintenance halls. Also, we provide imagery. So from the last visual audit, uh, we've taken some camera images and they're all attached to the maintenance hall object. And I can simply open those images and the technician going to that, that location knows exactly what they can expect uh, from the image data that's been provided. So all of this is uh, accessible to the technician. We also provide capacity planning. So on the pathways, we can see the fill ratios on each of the ducts. And we can also see what cables are routed through each of the individual ducts within that maintenance hall facility. So very quickly, we've been able to find the cable, locate it, get its available last test results, check that against the OTDR data, bring up the image data and show exactly where the technician needs to go to start troubleshooting and resolving that type of fault. So moving on from there, um, you see the, the types of information that we manage. We've got duct capacity, cable capacities, uh, and routing information. Well, we can use that to also analyze our infrastructure. We can ask questions of it once we have all of this data. We can ask questions such as, where do I have available ducts or available trays that aren't used? Or where do I have ducts that have 50% greater capacity? Um, we can also ask questions such as, where do I have available fiber or fiber that is not being used? So let's just show that in action. I'm just going to recall a duct bank, uh, which I have saved. And all this does is just recall some, some layers that just explicitly show the duct and how they're routed between my facilities. We have an analytics engine. And I can create analytics against any type of object. So whether it's an equipment analytics, it could be, do I have um, spare ports in a patch panel? Or do I have spare capacity in a rack for mounting new hardware? These are the types of questions that we can ask of the system. Uh, I now want to ask a pathway question. And the pathway question I want to ask initially is, where do I have unused ducts? And I can just apply that analytic to my view. And we can now see flashing the ducts where we have free or available capacity. So I have two sections of my duct banks where I have ducts that are currently not in use. Uh, perhaps I want to service between building three and building two. This is not going to be very useful. So I can ask another question. So I'll go back to my analytics engine. And the next question I'm going to ask is, show me ducts which have 50% uh, or greater capacity. So I set that and you can now see uh, I, most of my infrastructure, I have at least one duct which has uh, is only half filled. So perhaps I could use that for pulling through new cables as I have available capacity in that infrastructure. What I don't have is any available capacity between building three and this maintenance hole. So that could be a sticking point in the future if we need to get services through there. We can do the same with fiber cables. So let me just turn these analytics off. I'm going to recall a view showing the cable plant. 
So again, all this is do doing is just turning on and off visual layers for me. So we're now showing cable plant infrastructure that's being deployed. And I can now filter my cable view for the analysis that I want to perform. So for example, I, uh, I want to list, oh, let me just turn off this. So I want to list only fiber cables. So using my filter tree, I can simply filter on fiber cables and I'm now seeing all of the fiber cables that I have. I can filter this to only show the fiber cables in my active view. And again, it just filters that list even further. I now want to only show cables where I have free media or media that is not connected. So again, go to my filter manager. I have a filter already defined, which shows free media, and I can just apply that to the view. And I can now see the cables in this view where I have free and available fiber. If I want to see where those cables are, I can simply click on the cable object and we can see that cable object flashing. So I can select on any one of these to show exactly where those cables are. I can see I have cables routed between building three, building one and building two. So basically, if I wanted to get a service, a new fiber service between building three and building two, I can see I have available capacity by using these two cables that take me from building three via building one into building two. So I can use Planet to maximize the infrastructure that has been deployed rather than wasteful new installations. Okay, so moving on from this, um, I want to look at an impact analysis. Okay, so using the same view, it could be that there's been some construction work in our outside plant. We have a report that in a particular area, we've had an incident and perhaps the they've dug up the duct the, the duct bank has collapsed or it's flooded or there has been uh you know it could be an earthquake event where the duct bank has been cracked the cables are snapped we need to know who and what is impacted by that event so because we have the model of our infrastructure the network map I can click at any position to find out what's there. So let's say the incident was around about this location. I can open the selection and I can see exactly what fiber cables are at that position. If I select the objects, I can also see any services or what we call circuits that they may support. So I can see here it supports this primary circuit. If I select that circuit and click OK, <coughs> will now open up all of the areas associated with that circuit. Okay, so I can see exactly how the cables are routed that support that circuit and within which facility they are shown. If I come back here, I can also create what we call a dependency view. And this now creates a diagram showing me everything that's physically dependent on that cable. So it's now building the network map based upon all of the fiber cables in the selected fiber. And it's showing me what they are connected to in the network map. Again, this is a fully interactive diagram. If I want to see what cables are at any position in this diagram and their names and labels, I can simply click on the object. It gives me the cable name shown here in the lower left, it gives me its length, tells me what it's connected from and where it's connected to, and the exact ports that it is connected on each of the devices. If I want to, I can click on a piece of equipment and it tells me information about that hardware device. If I want, I can run a path trace through this. So what equipment is connected to this network switch? So I can show a physical path and we can now trace the uplink in this case 
to show that uplink is supporting this piece of equipment over here. So I can get past traces and I can query and analyze this, this view to see how devices are physically connected. I can also show where this device is located. So click on the workgroup switch. I can show where it's physically located in the rack. So if I click on the rack, it opens up the rack elevation within which that switch is placed. And I can its physical location highlighted here. This rack is fully interactive, okay? So I can not only zoom in and zoom out, I can pan around the rack and see different types of information. I'll take the rack, so just zoom out here. It's a full 3D view. So if I want to see side profile or rear profile of the rack, I can simply rotate that around and look and analyze the information shown there. Not only that, to help me in perhaps which we're coming to next, I can also show what ports are connected on that device. Okay, so currently we're showing, uh, we can see the highlighted ports here to show which ports are currently available connected on the patch panels. If I switch to the front view, and zoom in to the switches, we can see the green markers on each of the switches, which is showing me that those switches have a fiber on that device. We also have port statistics. So here I can see types of each port I have currently available and which of those ports are currently in use and how many of those are free. Again, all helping me with the design process. So you see, I've gone from an outside plant map. I've looked at where the cable, how the cables are routed through my facilities. I've drilled down into the cable to show everything physically connected. I've moved to the equipment that's connected at one end of the cable and shown its physical connection. I very quickly have a very clear view of what was impacted and where it's located by that incident and event. Okay, so let's go on to the final step in the process that. I want to present today, and that's how we use IRM in design mode. Let me go to my building one, floor one data center. Uh, I've got some user work areas here and a telecom room. And I'm just gonna turn my pathways back on so we can see where we have tray infrastructure with the facility, and that's represented by the green lines here. Before I... <clears throat> design the cables. Again, I can open up the rack view. Let's open up its elevation. Reload the client here. Just refresh. Okay, so just as that's reloading, what we're going to do is in, in a moment, we're going to look at the rack within which we want to route the new cables. We're going to use the port status to check which patch panel has capacity for the new services. And then we're going to show how we can auto route the cables from the work areas to, to the rack. And we can use that for any part of our infrastructure. So here, I'm going to go again to the rear view of the patch panels. Just zoom in slightly. Rotate that like so. And if I show the port statistics, here we can now see the green ports are showing me that the we, we have nearly 50% utilization on this patch panel. So if I want to run two 16 also more cables than I can route and connect them to the first patch panel in this patch panel list. So with that in mind, what is I want to route services from these faceplates to the 
rack shown here. I use my cable routing object. Here I can choose predefined cable sets and a cable set defines a type of cable and a naming standard to be applied. So if I click on this cable set, it's showing the naming standard that we want to apply, which is one slash D, and then it's just going to increment to the next available number, which is 23. I'm going to run two cables. So I'm going to create those cables and I want to route them starting at this faceplate here. I want to enter the tray system at this point and I'm going to auto route it through the highlighted tray system. So any of the highlighted tray I can now exit from, I want to exit at this point up by the rack. And I use that exit point and it now auto cable over that part of the tray system. And you can see as I'm routing the cable, it's automatically calculating the current segment length and the overall pathway length for the cable. And I can then terminate that within the cab and I would terminate that onto the relevant rack equipment. Okay, so once we've routed the cables, uh, we then need to pass them over to the Linkware Live system. So I have some cables already designed and connected. If I just open up the properties of this, we can just bring up its port and connectivity information. So I can now see on the termination side, I have these two cables. They're connected to IDC ports on the port A and port B, and we can see where they're connected to. What we also have the ability to do is we have a reporting engine around this. So I can generate cut sheets and cable reports to show exactly how, just zoom out here, how the are terminated on the equipment. So for this work area faceplate that we were just looking at, I can see the cable D1 and D2 is connected to the IDC, and the other end is connected to this patch panel, which was one of the patch panels that we were just looking at. So we have a full reporting engine around this to, to provide uh, bills of materials and cut sheets for the technician. I now want to choose which cables to pass to Linkware Live. Manage selection. Okay. You should have my cable there. Where are they? Just for all of you. Okay, so I have cable layers turned on. That's what the blue lines represent. That's why I couldn't actually select the cables. If I go to manage selection now, I can choose the cables that need to be sent to Linkware Live for testing. So we simply select the cables that we want to send. I'm going to send the first six in this case. And with our integration, we now have the option to push this directly to the Linkware Live system. Here, I can now choose which project that that is going to that data is going to be pushed to so i can push this to scenario 1 received from irm and if i want to i can go straight to linkware from within irm to check the cables and look at the current state so if i just click on the edit linkware project it opens up the linkware live system we can now see the cables that we just passed to linkware live are now available currently untested as soon as we receive the test data from the test test device, then the test date and tested length and other test information will then be passed back to the RM system. And as you saw at the very beginning of the presentation, we could then access the test results directly from within IRM if we ever need to check that information. That concludes my part of 
the presentation today. What I'm going to do is hand you back to Mark now to answer any questions that you may have based upon what you've seen today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jason. That was uh, fantastic. I, I always learn a little bit more every time I see that, and I get to see the power of the the system you guys have there. So let's see what have we what have we got for questions here. Let me uh, let me do one more thing here. Uh, I wanted to share my screen just to have some information up there while we're talking. And uh, you know, one of the first questions that comes up is that are there other applications in addition to Linkware Live or other vendors that uh, that your Planet solution integrates with? Yes, uh, we actually integrate with enterprise management systems for the active network management. We also integrate with business workflow systems such as ServiceNow and BMC. So as part of a whole service desk, service request type system where you know, change requests and infrastructure change requests may start, then we have a ticketing system that integrates with that to do the full cycle, uh, life cycle management of, of, of infrastructure changes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, another question is, um, what is required to run this software? Um, you know, does it run on, uh, what kind of server do you need or what kind of uh, capabilities are required to run it? Okay, so the IRM solution uh, is basically hosted by Amazon Web Services. So we have a cloud-based server on which the software uh, resides. Uh, each customer has their own dedicated server, so they're, they're not sharing their data with, with anyone else. Their server is dedicated and uh, usually within, roughly within their locale based upon the availability of the AWS region to their, to their specific location. So basically the answer is you, you need a browser. <laughs> basically, if you have a browser, you have access to our own. And, uh, and, and I think uh, the, the one thing I would say that's probably would be appreciated too is a, uh, a nice large monitor would really, would really help when you're running this. I, sort of as with any graphics, of, graphics system, yes, we highly recommend high resolution, large screen solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I can, maybe you can talk my boss into getting one for me. Uh, <laughs> also, you, you mentioned, you showed all the different devices that, like, for example, in the rack elevation, I think that's when this question came in. But um, what kind of a device catalog do you have to be able to populate those things? Okay, so uh, we have a dedicated team that manages and builds library objects, or what we call our library, um, which, you know, for all of the major network vendors, the major infrastructure vendors, um, CMON, C-Core, uh, uh, Fiber, Fiber Plant, um, and, and basically their role is to maintain that library, keeping it up to date so that uh, that library is then available to our customers. However, we do understand that, you know, the, the customer may have specific requirements and they do have the ability to model their own objects. They can get as long as they have, you know, image data that they have and some technical specs, it's quite easy to go in and actually create your own, your own, your own devices for for the equipment and cabling that you're deploying. Okay. Um, another question uh, I, I figured somebody would ask this is, uh, what's what's the cost on this? I, I know that might that might not be an easy question to answer, but if if you have an answer, feel free to. Uh, I don't really have an answer. It's, it depends on scope scale of the system. We we you know sometimes some people use us dedicated to just pure hardware asset management. Some people are outside plants. Some people are inside plants. Some people uh, are just user management or software management. We have so many channels of the tool that can be used um but it's it's i can't really give a a, a clear a, you know it, it costs x number of dollars uh, I, I don't really have that answer okay um another question is does the system manage pole line infrastructure yes it does uh we basically any any physical thing that is is out there in the world 
uh, regarding infrastructure uh, can can be managed and designed into the system. Yes, so we can. Okay. We can manage um, that. Here's another question: Is do uh, do you? I think by that they mean Planet IRM, or do the customers build the database? So there's there, there's there's a couple of solutions here. Um, we we provide professional services where we can take any data that you may have, whether that's drawings, cut sheets, um, historical data, image data, and we can we can preload the system for you so that you know you have almost a turnkey solution. You turn the system on, it's got your data in it. Uh, we also have training services to teach you how to do that yourselves, uh, and it can be as simple as just just um, uh, populating a spreadsheet. That, that's how we bulk load information in. We have templates that uh, if you populate them with your information, they can be used to bulk load this data into the system. So there's, there's a number of solutions available to, to the customer on how they would like to proceed. And it looks like uh, you can take diagrams and, and whatnot, say from Visio, which is obviously very popular as well. Is that right? Uh, correct. Yes, we have a number of tools available to get graphical data in. We 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 uh, also integrate with um, GIS systems, so we can you know if you want your Google Maps there, then you can have them as backdrops. If you want uh, your, your AutoCAD drawing or GIS drawings uh, or Visio diagrams, then you know if that's where your data resides, then we have tools to get that visual data into the system. Okay, um, another question is, does the system manage down to the circuit level? Yes, um, I briefly showed that on, on the in, impact analysis. Um, when I selected on the, the, the cable, it was actually showing the circuits that that cable supports. Uh, and, and when I clicked on that circuit, it opened up, or I don't even remember, but it opened up the entrance facility and a lot of other drawings over which that circuit was routed to show me the physical infrastructure that was supporting that. And yes, we do manage that down to the cham down to the channel level for the uh, you know frequency type circuitry. All right. And well, here's the next one is does the, can the system produce construction drawings? Yes. Um, as, as again, it, it's it's a fully blown CAD system uh, that that is available in IRM. So anything that you can pretty much do, uh, you know, for basic CAD level type drawing, then we can provide that that, that same level of, of of construction drawing. Yes. Okay, but it can also pull data in from other CAD systems as well, right? Yes, it can. So okay. yes, if if you've got yeah, if you've got civil type information uh that you want to include then you can bring that in from your your you, you know the, the the civil drawings yes okay um a lot of questions showing up um are you able for for management reporting and whatnot can you provide statistics for example like the number of equipment or the, you know the number of items the cost of equipment that sort of stuff I didn't lose you, did I? Uh oh. Aha! I think we might have lost. Uh, hopefully, we didn't lose me, but uh, I think we might have lost. What did we get there? Hold on, just a second. Sorry about. Sorry for the uh, confusion. I think we might have lost. Uh, Jason. Jason, are you there? Hmm. Actually, uh, Bill, maybe you'd be interested in uh, answering those questions. I see you're muted. Yeah, no, I'm not uh, muted anymore. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, Bill Spencer, also from Planet Software. He uh, He's just been lurking in the background. but. Uh, Maybe you can answer that question since we seem to, uh, Jason seems to have dropped off. Perhaps he didn't pay his uh, local internet service provider. I don't know. But anyway, the question um, was, can could the system... Could you the question? Sorry, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. The, the question was, can the, can the system provide statistics 
poor management, such as uh, you know number of different devices, types of equipment, what are the costs? You know, basically, what's what what are, what do all my assets look like? Yes, and, and not only that, uh, but the uh, it can produce bills and materials. Uh, if you have a change management process and you're doing the design portion in our product, uh, you you can produce uh, reports for a change management board or a technical review board with regard to the funding for that particular portion of the project. Um, and also we have the ability, if you choose to, to have what we call uh, disposable items, think items that basically you would not normally buy, but like connectors and things like that, you may have them in bulk. Uh, but you can also uh, have the ability to add a certain amount of those on a project, and it will also price those out as well. Okay. I, th I think Jason has returned. Yes. Um, apologies, apologies for that. I hit the wrong button, and it closed my <laughs> WebEx session. I do apologize. We were, we were theorizing <laughs> you hadn't paid your Internet service provider bill. <laughs> Anyway, um, okay, so uh, we, we brought Bill in to help answer some questions. I'll, I'll let the rest of like I got a couple more here. Can the results be stored and transferred if working in an SCIF? I'm not exactly sure what an SCIF is, but perhaps you guys do. There's a lot of lingo around this sort of thing. Uh, oh, I, think, I think what he's referring to, if he could correct, I think he's talking about a SCIF. Is that correct? SCIF, it's all uppercase, so I just read out the letters. Skiff, yeah. that, that's how I would say it if I had to say it. Well, obviously what happens is that the, the software, basically, and one of the things that, that we didn't mention so far is we also have an on-premises version of this that can be deployed that's fully containerized. And uh, if it, a skip is normally an area where uh, government customers keep classified information. Uh, and so we have been deployed in environments like that, but on an on-premises basis, uh, because they wanted to maintain classified secret data. Uh, and they view a lot of the data in our system that since we aggregate so much data, that basically escalates the level of security that's required. Okay, and I, I understand you you do have a lot of uh, you have a number of customers in which security is uh, quite paramount, such as uh, the military and whatnot. So I, I I have a feeling that if the question is around security, you've got a good answer. Speaking of security, another question here, which is if we were to upload our customer data, can we share that with the end user, and is the system hack proof? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we we use the latest web technologies for uh, encrypting the data, so ensuring it's secure. Um, everybody has has authentication to the system, uh, which is managed. Which we can have, you know, um, complex. We can enforce complex passwording uh, to provide you know the the best security possible for the information. Uh, we also provide uh, what we call published content. So rather than access to the what we call the web plant that you saw me demonstrating today, there is just a reporting and published content console where they can get to dashboarding, uh, our IAPDF published content for reports, for rack elevations, and for, for reporting. Okay. Yeah. I, I like I said, you have a lot of customers for which security is paramount. So, I, I think you probably have very good answers for that. Um, okay. Well, here's one last question because uh, I think we I don't want to go too long here. Um, this this this, uh, this person says the program looks amazing. So I'm sure you'll like that. Thank you. If you have a cabinet full of equipment, can the program tell you the power or heat usage and the available remaining power so that you can decide whether or not you can install more equipment good uh, question uh, by the way uh, absolutely absolutely um we provide full and comprehensive rack statistics regarding space and environmental data heat and power both what's being provided to the cabinet and what's currently being utilized based on what's connected to the power infrastructure 
uh, being provided from your PDUs or power sources. Uh, I didn't show it, but our analytics engine provides you know full visual analysis on that. So we, again, we can ask questions. Show me racks where I have you know 10 RU available. Show me racks that have 200 watts of power capacity available. Uh, and I can use those questions to help me determine where I need to install new server devices or if I need to pull new cables where I have capacity on my patch panels or fiber distribution cabinets. Wow. One uh, other yeah. thing, Mark, is that uh, each one of the li those library entries, we have over 14,000 product library entries. The heat and power requirements for every one of those devices is, already, is there. So when you put a device in a rack, we know how much heat and power we believe it requires. Yeah. That's based yeah. on the manufacturer's specs then, right? So you Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So you don't even the user doesn't even have to figure that out on their own. That's great. That's really cool. Um I'm gonna say I've sa I've saved this question for last. Is uh um, we've had someone saying I have you know, I use Linkware Live with a number of my customers. If I wanted to set up a meeting uh with some of these customers to talk about this as an option, how would I go about doing that? Bill? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. this is a question you've been waiting for all day. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I, obviously, you reach out for us into our website uh, and our phone number's there. You can call in and ask for support or sales and get to one of some of our folks. And obviously, we do this all the time. So we set up these types of briefings. Uh, we have also, we have available for some of these situations where you may just be able to use some of our videos that we have. And obviously, I know, uh, Mark, a lot of the, the videos we have so far, you've already put up on your YouTube site. Yes, and in fact, we, uh, we will also post this demonstration. And uh, I think we'll take this demonstration maybe and take some of, uh, some of the pretty cool stuff that Jason did and, you know, divide it into little three and four minute uh, segments of here's how you do this, here's how you do that, you know, here's how you you know figure out where you need to go troubleshoot when you find a break with an OTDR, and uh, and I think that those will be very handy as well. And obviously, I would imagine in the uh, in these days of COVID, you're probably quite good at doing these demonstrations online with a customer as well, uh, much like we've seen here, right? Exactly, and we do that frequently. Yeah. 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 That's probably a good place to start. Okay, um, that's it. I don't really have much to add as well. So um, I'll leave this up on the screen for those of you who want to go to the Planet website and look a little bit more. As I said, there's more information on our YouTube page. If you go to flukenetworks.com slash Planet IRM, you can also see a little bit more of it from our point of view. But obviously, if you want to learn about the Planet solution, the best place to go is it's their website. Uh, as they've mentioned, they've got videos, training materials, and uh, you can reach out to them and get a demonstration where you can see the exact things that you're interested in, whether it's uh, uh, you know circuits on poles or how to pull up the power consumption of different devices in a rack. We, you can drill into those specific things. Obviously, a, a full demonstration of all those capabilities would have taken up most of today and part of tomorrow, I would guess. So uh, definitely reach out to these guys, and they can help you uh, see the specific things that you're interested in. So, Jason, thank you very much. Thanks, Bill, for jumping in at the last uh, second there and uh, helping out with some of the answers. And, of course, thank you to everyone for taking part today. We will uh, hopefully talk to you soon in another webcast. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye now. You guys are still on the, uh, okay. yep, I'm here. Uh, somebody must have, I, I are you on, are you still on Skype? I can hear you. Yeah, there's an echo. I don't know what's coming from.